Hello and welcome back to Holopon Solo Sagas where today we will be playing solo the more freeform version of Call of Cthulhu. So yes, welcome back. We will be playing Call of Cthulhu, as I said, 7th edition Call of Cthulhu using the Solo Investigator's Handbook to create a more freeform way. You can play uh, Call of Cthulhu solo using the uh, Alone Against books, and there are a couple of other ways as well. Uh, but this is more of a freeform, so rolling dice generating, more traditional oracle based. Uh, so we're all playing. Welcome uh, back to subscribers. Uh, it's good to see you again, and thank you to our members. Uh, at some point, I'll try to remember midway through to ask people to subscribe. Uh, and, and also offer people joining. Uh, anyway, we can look forward to that. Where were we with our story? Well, we have Evelyn. Evelyn is our Egyptologist and antiquitarian. Uh, we have done two other sessions, I think. I think this is our third. Uh, so Evelyn has been investigating some weird things that have been happening at the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford. Uh, it's been there since the since years ago. Look at session one, and uh, I do a bit of a history of the Ashmolean. So we have uh, had a uh, a strange tablet that uh, Evelyn has been studying with hieroglyphs that has highlighted something. Could have been coincidental. Could have been a thing. But we've also definitely we've we've highlighted some things with a very strange painting that Evelyn's uh, colleague Rachel had been studying. Rachel has gone missing. Uh, uh, the building that she lives in, uh, some some flats or apartments, uh, but we would call them flats in the England in England. Uh, those flats that the building has uh, would blew up, uh, and uh, Rachel's body hasn't been found. Now, Evelyn has studied the painting. Uh, Rachel had said that she's seen things move, and she was having some weird dreams about it. Evelyn was studying the painting last night, and there was a weird event occurred. Our mythos is at twelve, and here's seen some faces within the painting and he wants to send that painting for study, uh, for further study at the university. So the Ashmolean Museum is linked to Oxford University. Uh, Oxford University would have better stuff for doing analysis of the painting. Now uh, Evelyn has done some, I think we, I think it was called, uh, so shining light on the painting and using uh, uh, magnification to see if he can find anything on the painting and couldn't find anything. So what we're going to attempt to do this session, I think we'll start, it would be the morning of the 3rd of June. So we would be on the 3rd of June, uh, so probably around 9 a.m. Evelyn would go in uh, to work at the Ashmolean and his intention was to approach the keeper. Now it's just coincidental that the keeper, who is of course the GM of a uh, Call of Cthulhu game, the Keeper would be the term that would have been used in uh, the 1920s for the head of a museum or the director, we would probably call them the director or the head curator of a museum or a gallery, particularly museum, uh, would have been called uh, a Keeper. And so the Keeper, who was in charge of uh, the curating things coming in and out, in charge of the staffing, in charge of resource management, would be the Keeper. So Evelyn is going to attempt to go and speak to the Keeper and see if the Keeper will give Evelyn the permission to release the painting to the university and the university can then do some study on it using radiography and uh, I think there's something to do with infrared light. Hold on, let me check my notes. So they would be able to use at the, so he would have used raking of light, which is shining light at an angle on the paint and seeing if the, the paint has a different depth at a certain point. So basically what Evelyn wants to know is the, the, the uh, painting has the faces of past owners in the painting. Evelyn wants to know when that was been painted on top. So when there would have been overpainting occurring. Uh, he at the moment hasn't been able to find anything that shows overpainting, but he would send it off to the university to use ultraviolet light examination, x-ray radiography, and possibly infrared uh, reflectography, which was new in the 1920s. So we will have Evelyn is going to go to see the keeper, maybe take the keeper a coffee, see if the keeper, you know, butter the keeper up and see if the keeper can actually will release it. So Evelyn will do a fast talk. Let me see if I can find an MP. Oh, there would, might be an NPC in the Solo Investigator's Handbook has some NPCs in the back. 
I might be able to use one of those and then we can do uh, a competing. So what do we have? Uh, athlete, athlete, average humans, policeman, thug, cultist, uh, warden. What we use is I'm going to use intelligent agent, intelligence agent because that's someone who would probably be about the same sort of level. Now what have I got in here that might be able to? Now these are all sort of physical things. So they do have an education of 70 and an int of 80, which is basically the same as us, but reverse. So we, we have more uh, education than pure intelligence. So let's give this person, what is their persuade? Our persuade is 60. Okay, so reading the uh, Keeper's rule book, when having an interaction in seventh edition, uh, trying to persuade or fast talk an opponent, uh, you basically will either have, it's either going to be a hard success at half, or it's going to be an extreme, extreme success, one fifth, depending on the receiving parties. Now, we're not going to say, so what it says is, if the receiving party is positively inclined, just don't bother rolling, just let it be a success. I don't think the keeper is going to want to use the university, use the museum's money, because the museum would have to pay the university. It'd be internal tra money transfer, but they'd have to pay the university to have these things done, and the keeper's not going to want that. So, uh, it's, they don't necessarily have a strong feeling one way or another. They probably have no. We can say that they have no misgivings. Or let's 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 ask let's ask our fudge dice. Uh, uh, well, we just do it like, like, like we'll go with the, the mythos of uh, oh, or could we do? Story direct. No, we'll do this. We'll do this. Uh, do they do they care one way or another about Evelyn? Uh, that cancels. That's no. No, they're not inclined one way or another. So we'll just have Evelyn. He's going to go forward and just need to do a simple uh, persuade. He's not going to try and fast talk. He's going to try and persuade the keeper to allow him to do this. Now persuasion. Evelyn has a sixty in persuasion, but Evelyn does have one insight that he gained last session uh, that he won't be able to use. So I'm gonna burn that inside point to give me an additional dice to attempt to uh, persuade the keeper that really we should send this painting towards to the university for further study. And it might take uh, a couple of days to come back. So we need to get under 60. Uh, we've got 60 exactly, or we have 90. So we will throw away, which is our insight dice, and we've got 60 exactly. So the keeper is very much, well, I'm not too sure, you know, Evelyn. Uh, there is a very much a shortage of money here. And what do you really think is going on? Well, you see, uh, uh, keeper, the problem is, is that there are, seems to be additions to this painting which shouldn't have occurred. Now, if there are additions to the painting, then the painting isn't quite worth what we think it's worth. And we need to basically then, we, we shouldn't really be displaying it as an original work. It's not an original work. It's been altered. It's basically been damaged and possibly needs to be repaired back to its or or original state. Now, the only way we want anybody to then do those repairs to the original state is if it has actually been altered. If it isn't an alteration, then it's quite peculiar because it means that there's the faces of past owners of, on the painting. And I can't actually see any signs of overpainting, and this is troubling me. It means that possibly it isn't the original that we think it is in the first place. It might just be a copy in the first place. And what we really need to do, Keeper, is understand the painting. And, and I hope you can understand. Well, Evelyn, it does cost money. You are aware of that, but I see what you mean, and we really do need to understand. I will push this through, uh, but I can't say when it might come through. I can't really push harder than we would be expecting. Uh, so because he only rolled exactly bang on, uh, we'll have to send it off and then hopefully it will come back at some point. Uh, and so Evelyn will uh, put into his journal and he'll go back and so he'll wrap it up, he'll process it and he'll send it off, fill in all the paperwork and send it off. So our next one will be midday, but our morning journal entry will be something along the lines of, uh, and maybe we'll roll, we'll roll story direction at this point to see if, so we're definitely going to be wrapping this up, but maybe something will come out of uh, us doing this. So what we need to do is, uh, within Paul uh, Paul Bimler's, uh, I, don't, I can't remember how I used to say that wrong, but I never used to say it, Bimler. 
Paul Bimler's uh, book, there's a process that we run through. So the first thing we do is we roll on story direction. Uh, we have our mythos of 12 at the moment. So we roll percentage and we add the mythos of 12 to this. So we get 29. 29 comes as downtime. So 1 to 20 is downtime. Uh, we'll roll to see if there's a disturbance in the downtime. We add mythos as well. So we're not... I mean, it says if we have purposely take downtime, downtime would be more resting. This is just the period of the morning. Uh, we're just packing, we're wrapping something up in brown paper. Uh, 49, which is 50, which would be 61. 61 is we're left undisturbed. So nothing peculiar pushes the story forward at this point, which is kind of what we were expecting anyway. So the keeper was quite helpful in allowing me to process the painting and send it off to the university for further study. I've requested a full range of studies to be conducted on the painting and I'm not too sure how long that will take, but hopeful it will be back within the week. I still haven't heard anything from Rachel, so possibly when waiting for the results to come back, I could seek out Rachel's relatives and see if I can find out more about Rachel. She has gone missing and hasn't shown herself today possibly I can find out more. So that's because I've just thought. So it'll take time for uh, uh, the painting. So send painting to uni for study. So if we're sending that off to the university, we'll try and get some results back. And well, what we might do, there was a few things that we we're thinking of doing. Uh, we could try and find out more about past owners because uh, there might be more faces. There, there were other faces in that painting. We don't know about them. The last one we found was the owner before last, Reginald P. Cartwright. So we don't know why they would add themselves to it and overpainting, so that we're going to find out by sending it off to the university. Uh, did Rachel visit relatives? So we could go and try and find out about if Rachel has gone to her relatives and just try and investigate where Rachel might be. Uh, we have spoken to the keeper. That, I think basically that's it at the moment. We need to find out if this painting has been overpainted and then try and find out about Rachel and Rachel's relatives. So we might have a bit of a time slip. Uh, now let's see, now would, we could go back to studying those hieroglyphs, though I've got a feeling that the hieroglyphs isn't the focus of this story. The focus of this story is the painting. Let's roll on the story direction table and see if that will give us somewhere to go. So we will spend the afternoon studying the, we'll spend the afternoon, so what should we spend the afternoon studying the hieroglyphs or finding out more about the painting. Maybe we'll research more about the painting because the painting has taken out our fancy. So our focus is going to be more about this painting. Maybe the, 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 the artist, who painted it, are there other works? I mean, we don't want to put a priority on. Possibly we might pry into to Rachel. If Rachel doesn't come back or something finds out about Rachel, this might be something to do with Rachel as well. So we haven't got anything particular that's uptown mythos. Our mythos uh, is still at 12, but we might want to get that painting to come back. Or maybe, maybe if something turns out, the painting will come back early because weird stuff has been happening. So we've got 57, which turns into 69. 69 is danger. We've been getting a lot of danger. Uh, the danger table, roll on the danger and then roll verbs. So we have percentage on the danger table. We have 17. You feel a threatening presence, it is tangible, a spirit, or something uh, relevant nearby. Okay, maybe we haven't sent the painting off and it's us, us when wrapping the painting. Like, the, either the string keeps breaking on the painting or something. Okay, so we have, we feel a threatening presence, a spirit, or malevolent force. Let's roll a couple of those, uh, let's roll some of those verbs and maybe we don't send the painting, maybe we, we are dissuaded from sending the painting. So how verbs work, this gives us a range of uh, 100, so 2 means it's in the 0 to 100, which means this is a 92. This is how, it's a, quite a good system, basically uh, Paul provides us with a huge list of uh, 500 verbs. Uh, and then we've got a range of uh, 0 to uh, 100, 100 to 200, 3 to 4, la 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 la, in, in band. So this tells us the band, this tells us the actual number. It's a very good system, it's good. Um, 92, celebrate. 
926. So that's 426. Segregate. 774, which is, I think that'd be 374. 374. 374 prohibit. Celebrate, segregate, prohibit. Segregate and prohibit link together. Celebrate, we said that there was dancing going on in the party, in the, the painting. Segregate, prohibit. We've also got danger. We have a threatening presence, a spirit or a malevolent force. I've got something that comes into my mind about the, the painting and the dancing and maybe we start hearing music. Maybe we hear music or dancing as we're wrapping the painting. Let's do another one and we'll let this one lean towards what this might be. So we might not get to send this painting off. Uh, 11, so one, one, so that's just 11, alert. Okay, I like alert. So as we're wrapping the painting, let's do one more. See if that guides us a bit more. So 472 would be 172. 172, displease. Okay, all right. So we are wrapping that painting. Uh, so this would be, this is this. so we start wrapping the painting. Uh, okay, we're gonna start wrapping the painting and we start to hear some music coming around. So there's some strange music sounding out. Uh, we're going to have 50% uh, listen, which is 35. No, we don't even get bass listen. And it, we're, we're very confused about where this music is coming from. So we stop wrapping the painting. Uh, we've got the paper out. We're in uh, Rachel's, uh, 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 I don't know, would it be studio? Might, might be a studio or part of the warehouse where the painting's kept, but Rachel's been studying it. We'll put up some pictures previously. I'll see if I can dig them up and I'll put them back up of, of the spaces where they would actually look at paintings. This is more modern uh, photos, if I remember rightly. And we're, we're very confused because we're starting to hear some, some weird noise and it's, it's noise like, well, let's roll on the, let's roll on the, the sounds table and see what kind of sounds we're actually begin to hear. Uh, auditory effects table. 72, breathing. <laughs> okay, we're starting to hear breathing. Oh, that would be, that would sound, so breathing, breathing, not breathing. We're not gonna hear breathing, we're gonna hear breathing. We start to hear breathing and music. So maybe the breathing is heavy because of dancing. We're starting to hear the breathing mainly because of dancing. So we're hearing the breathing, we're hearing sort of some music playing. 14, 14 says it's coming from the walls. So it sounds like it's coming from in the walls in this room. So we're wrapping the painting and we can hear this, the breathing and dancing and it sounds like people moving around from inside the walls and it's very, very peculiar. And that's where we start to feel a real weird feeling inside of, of that's where we're feeling that threatening presence. There's a presence within the room like we felt last night with the shadows. So we start to, let's do a visual effect. Let's roll a visual effect to see what this throws at us, 21. The shape of a personal creature walking past the window. Okay, so we're gonna feel outside the door, we can see people dancing past the door and we can feel the shadow of dance, shadows of dancing, of dancing, just out of the reach of our eyes, so out of peripheral, we can see people dancing and we can feel that dancing around us as though we can feel the music and the dancing coming around us and it's, it's, it makes us, because it says it's a threatening presence, we're feeling, well, it doesn't feel happy. If there's a threatening presence around us of this, this movement and dancing and the shadows are moving around us and it's very overwhelming and we're trying to wrap this painting and things are distracting us. Let's roll, let's do a sanity roll. What are we on at the moment, our sanity? 48, okay, so things are starting to slip. Uh, 85, all right, this is really, so uh, Evelyn takes 1d4 plus one sand, which is five points of sand. That's a shock. Okay, this is really scaring Evelyn. Evelyn's beginning to be really scared, and Evelyn will, so this was gonna be midday, so whilst wrapping the painting, so just before midday, just before sending the painting off, Evelyn's done the paperwork, and that was what Evelyn did first, was the paperwork, and then when Evelyn gets out the packaging materials to begin to wrap and package the painting to send it to the university, They'll just be shipped into shipped. Uh, this starts to happen and Evelyn is gonna be really worried by this and just wanna get out of the room. 
So Evelyn, uh, Midday Journal. Evelyn isn't sending the painting off to the university today. Uh, this, this will really freak him out. Uh, maybe he can get someone to come and have a look at it instead. I tried to wrap the painting to send it off. I filled in the paperwork diligently as I was supposed to, as I've done many times before. And then I received, I took the packaging material to send the painting to the university for study out and began to package the painting. And the strangest feeling overcame me. It felt claustrophobic in the room. I felt like there were people around me moving, bumping into me. I could see shadows on the windows, on the doors of people moving, dancing, and there was music and breathing, but tired, labored breathing, as though someone had been exercising for far too long, had walked all day in the countryside, climbing over several stiles through muddy fields, and was tired and just wanted to stop. It didn't feel right. I had to get out of the room. I had to leave the painting as it was on the table, half wrapped, half packaged, and just leave. I went out for a walk around the streets of, of Oxford. Some of the, the, the students were out. Obviously, they were in their, uh, I don't know, gowns, 20s, uh, gowns. And that made me feel a bit more comfortable. It was sunny. It's June, the summer. It felt warm, although I still needed to wear my coat. But still, it was something weird happening in that room. Something weird happening with that painting. I'll see if somebody can come to the, un to the museum, to the Asmolean, to study the painting and give me help. Maybe something can be transported, something small. I'll ask and see what can be done. Uh, so, so he will not wrap the painting and send it off. Maybe he'll go, so what will we do next? So the painting hasn't gone off. But there's definitely something going on with the painting. We need to discover some bit more about to do with the painting. And the painting obviously knows something's going on because it's not liking what's happening. So we've started to interact. So the paintings began to interact with us and we've got some music and dancing and it's began to feel threatening. Let's try, it's okay, so, so we'll see what the table, we'll see what throws up with the story direction as we return to the Ashmolean after our walk. So that was, that was plus size. So that puts our mythos to 17 because uh, that's plus five for terrifying. So we will return to the Ashmolean. Uh, so that was that was midday. So maybe we've gone walking for a couple of hours. So maybe it's now 2 p.m. So we'll go back to the painting and we'll see, maybe we'll study the painting and see what's happening within the painting. 30 plus 17 is 47. 47 is discovery. So we are going to discover something about the painting in the afternoon. Can we still get development? Uh, just about, but we're starting to move out of the story development process and into more just discovering new things. So whenever we roll discovery, automatically discover a clue. So we get an insight, but the insight will come at a cost that we need uh, to pay for. We don't add our mythos to this roll, and this is our possible discovery. Uh, 39, uh, we observe or are call up in some occurrence directly related to what we're investigating. So something to do with the painting. Now there's a table of lots of different skills. Depending on what skill we roll, we'll, tr we'll try and come up with something that directs us around that to do with the painting. So. We're caught up in an occurrence directly related to the painting. 47, history. Okay, history. So we have a history, history related thing based on the painting. We're caught up in an occurrence directly related to what you are investigating, history related. Okay, so maybe because we were asking questions about a past owner, uh, in the records, maybe somebody will come back to us with more information about a past owner and we can try and find out something about a past owner. Now we did have further, so even with this we've got segregate, prohibit and celebrate. So celebrate might be something ritual based. Maybe that's where Rachel's gone. Maybe Rachel found out this information and Rachel hasn't disappeared. Rachel's gone because we've also had to congregate and enshrine, or shrine was something that we came up to do with Reginald P. Cartwright. 
So Reginald P. Cartwright had something to do with congregate and shrine. Maybe this painting has something to do with some, some group of people or some practice. Maybe that's where Rachel's gone. Maybe if we dig out our history, we can get some information about some group of people or practice and this painting is linked to it. Maybe they want it back and we start getting an inquiry. So let's do a history roll. What is our history? I think our history is good. Uh, history of 65. Uh, 40. So we get an easy success on a history roll. So we managed to get an insight and the insight is around a group or practice that has been uh, that is linked to this painting and the people going missing. So we might have another person who's gone missing or maybe something that links to a group. Maybe there's some cult and so there's something to do with this painting, something linked to do with the music. So we'll do more verbs. So we've got 252, fret, okay. Maybe that group is, is fretting that this painting has gone missing. I wonder if Rachel had joined them uh, 755, 755 is 355, overturn, 497, 497, right, okay, uh, 193, 193, that's just 93, challenge. So we have received a letter, so when we get back from our walk, there's a letter waiting for us. Uh, the letter is from, uh, let's, 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 let's go out to Avery. Let's go out to Avery where there's the stone circle. Uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put a picture up of Avery, the stone circle which surrounds Avery. I, don't, I can't remember if I posted some pictures of us because we went there, uh, Mandy and I went to, went to Avery. Uh, uh, there's a, it's a small village uh, in, uh, outside Oxford. Uh, it's a to the south, it's more towards Swindon Way, uh, along the Ridgeway. It's the, near the beginnings of the Ridgeway, which is an old Roman road. There's lots of stone, standing stones uh, and uh, burrows, uh, the burial mounds uh, in the surrounding areas. But uh, Avebury, which also has uh, an, <laughs> an issue with crop circles, uh, they're, off, they're constantly getting crop circles. I actually saw, uh, I'll tell a story, I'll segue, segue to a story. Uh, I used to go uh, backpacking around that area a lot on my own. Uh, I'd just go out for a few days, particularly on the Ridgeway. It's really pretty and I re I've always loved it. I'd just go backpacking. Uh, what I believe it's called wild camping now, but we used to call it back then camping uh, along that way uh, by myself. And the first time I ever went to Avery, I got off the bus. I was in my early 20s, uh, got off the bus and there was lots of activity. And someone said, oh, and I was asking, up, what's up? And someone said, there's a crop circle uh, just outside the town. Uh, and it was just over this little ridge where there's a stone, the whole of Avebury is encircled by standing stones, like thousands and thousands and thousands of years old standing stones like this, pretty cool. You can touch these stones that somebody worked their bum off to put there thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, pretty cool. Uh, and lo and behold, in this field, there was a crop circle, an actual crop circle. Uh, and it was the first time I'd ever seen a real crop circle. And it is weird. It's peculiar. Uh, it has a very weird vibe to it. The, the, the corn looks, <laughs> it's just weird. Uh, it's just weird. I don't know whether it, you know, I don't know. Uh, but it was just really, really weird. Let's send Evelyn to Avebury. Uh, it's, I think he's from near Avebury. I'll put he's from near Avebury uh, because we went there. Uh, we're going to send him back where he'll know there's some weird things going on around there. There's loads of druidic cults and groups of people who do stuff around there. Uh, we're going to send him to Avery. So, sorry, to, sorry to, to, to segue. Anyway, I don't, I don't know, if you're based in England uh, and you get a chance to go to Avery and you've never been before, like, have a weekend. Like, see if you can get, you can get there. And if you're ever going to, to England, just spend a day, if you can get the opportunity, go to Avery. It's pretty cool. And, and uh, the whole place just has a weird vibe to it. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, but equally so, go to the Eshmolean. Anyway. Actually, this is where I'll do it, as I've been wishing away. As you've, if you've just been watching me up until this point, uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have not yet subscribed, do subscribe. Uh, subscribe down on the little scroll for subscribe thing. Uh, you, there's plenty of stories. Sometimes I even don't get distracted, uh, and I just continue doing solo role playing. But otherwise, you can listen to me tell stories about stuff that I've encountered or my thoughts on things. Uh, I do appreciate everybody who watches. 
Uh, and I do appreciate you for subscribing. You'll get to know, and there's lots of backlog of other stuff. It's not just Cathelia, there's loads of other things I do. So it'd be really cool. If you would like to support me further, we do have the memberships uh, where you can join. If I say join, I think the little thing, the little button will go twinkly. Uh, you can join the memberships. Uh, we've called ourselves the Adventurers Guild. Uh, their members' names will have either already gone past or be there. I am incredibly grateful for all of your support. Uh, the members can, there's, uh, uh, you get early access to the videos if there's the uh, early doors membership and I've, there's going to be some uh, special content for members going up and I will be doing some, I've already done one competition early in the days but now we have a bit more members I'm going to put another competition up and I'll try and source some codes for things, uh, particularly from Free League but maybe from other producers as well and those will become available to the, uh, as a competition, a uh, not a lucky draw, but an actual to compete for, because uh, it's in Australia, you're not allowed to do lucky draws, uh, for people to compete for. Anyway, sorry to take up your time. Thank you very much for listening, uh, and back to the story. So, uh, Evelyn will have received a letter uh, saying that the painting does not belong to Ashmolean Museum, so this is the challenge, uh, but belongs to this group, this this uh, cult group. Let's roll, see if we can find a word that we can call this this group. 322, a word, hopefully this is a word that will be evocative that we can use for the group. Leah, Leah, Leah. Well, that's Leah as into stare. So, stare, so stare into the void. We have the void, we have the precipice, because what have we got? We've got nature, isn't it? If you stare deep enough into the void, it stares back into you. Uh, so we have got some group, some some group, uh, Queen's Void. Queen's Void, because there's some cards on the table. Queen's Void, Queen's Void. Doesn't make much sense, but that'll do. So in Avebury, we can send uh, we're saying uh, bring the painting so overturn right so the letter fret is because we have we, it's been the uh, the validity oh how about it's uh, that the the group is calling themselves the Queen's Void they're based in Avery they're asking uh, they're saying to to Evelyn which was like, who would have known that Evelyn, Evelyn's only been looking at the painting for two days because Rachel's disappeared. So then Rachel is with them. Maybe it's from Rachel. It's from Rachel. It's from Rachel who says that she's with them. They are challenging the ownership of the painting and are saying that they know about the painting. I'm pushing this forward a bit, aren't I? That they know about the painting uh, and she is concerned for Evelyn and is suggesting that instead of uh, whatever Evelyn is going to do to the, with the painting, Evelyn should bring it to Avery, to a certain place outside Avery, uh, and uh, she can give more information and the Queen's Void can give more information on the history of the painting and will tell Evelyn what's going on. This, we will say, is a bit weird to, to receive this, and particularly the fact that it says about uh, stop, you know, stop the studies because she she would she would know the sort of things that he might study and might do, like sending it to the university. And he says to bring it. So I'm going to say it's a bit unsettling, which gives us a plus one. Uh, he will lose a d4 minus two if you fail his sand check, but he passes his sand check. So our mythos goes up to 18, but uh, he doesn't lose any sanity. Our mythos goes to 18. All right. So this letter, so he's come back, it's the uh, 3rd of June, afternoon of the 3rd of June. When I returned from my walk around Oxford, the strangest thing had happened. There was a letter waiting for me on my desk next to the uh, hieroglyphic tab tablet. The letter seems to have been postmarked from Avebury, sent early this morning by a special delivery. The letter's from Rachel. Rachel seems to con be concerned that we shouldn't study the painting anymore and instead she requests, begs even. It was strange wording from her. The handwriting was rushed as well. Begs me to return the painting to the group, the Queen's Void, who are based outside Avery, where I grew up. It's a weird, strange area. 
and there are many groups that study things and practice old practices. She asks, hold on, what else was there? She says, she says that they challenge the ownership of the painting and that I should bring it and I can find out more about its history and more about what's happening around it. I haven't returned back to the room where the painting is being stored yet. Possibly that's what I should do next. So the question then is, is Evelyn going to take this to Avery? Now we said that he went and asked the keeper if he could send it to the university. Now that's because it would cost money, which he can't pay for. But sending it to off down to Avery, now that is slightly breaking the rules because it's technically stealing the painting. Now is Evelyn, is Evelyn going to do that? He can get it out because he's gonna have to package it up and ship it out anyway. But can he get it there? So we've got two bits. First off, is he going to take it to the painting? I reckon that is failing a sanity check. 41 passes a sanity check, only just. So he might have second thoughts about doing this and wonder if it's the right thing to do or not. So the next bit is, is can he ship it there, which is a credit rating check, which he's got 50 credit rating, uh, 43. So he can get it there. So he can get it there. Now, should he get it there is the next bit. So what we're going to do is we will do a story direction roll at this point to see if he chooses to get it there, which is plus 18 to this. Uh, which is, what's that? So that would be 86. 86 is dice roll. Is that 86? Yes, 86. Dice roll. So you hear something, you see something, or something happens. We don't add mythos to this. Uh, 30, you hear something. Okay, so based on what we roll to here, he will go back in to look at the painting, and he's going to hear something, and this might... Uh, uh, affect him and make him decide he needs to, f there's something weird about this painting, something weird that the university is going to be able to tell him about. Uh, 83, dear me, what's this? Slippery slopping, auditory effects, roll twice, once for effect, once for location. All right, slippery slopping, 50, coming from inside an object. Slippery slopping, coming from inside an object. Okay, so that is, weird that is instantly i will instantly want him to do a sand check and we are going to say it's not ter that's is that terrifying there's noise coming from inside the painting the painting is wrapped sort of semi-wrapped in brown paper he goes in to sort of to, with the letter to look at the painting and there's oh that's oh, okay i'm going to bump the mythos to 23 that's plus five uh noise in painting slippery slopping so that is definitely making there's definitely sound it's like when the fridge i don't know if you remember a few i don't know if you watch these but the fridge broke a while ago it was making some noises that fridges aren't supposed to make and you could definitely hear like from around the room you could hear there was something wrong and then you could hear the noise was coming in the fridge not proper noise now i don't think there was something occult with the fridge i think its compressor was broken uh but paintings don't normally make noises uh failing uh the uh sanity check Really, this is starting to freak, only losing two points there. This is starting to freak Evelyn out. This is this is really wrong. So Evelyn is going to take this painting. So Evelyn is going to, uh, Evelyn is going to do a roll on intelligence to see if he can get, otherwise he's gonna ask someone else to do the painting. 62, okay, only just under intelligence. So he knows that this just doesn't make any sense. This is just not making any sense. And so he holds himself together long enough uh, to wrap the painting up, uh, but it really is starting to freak him out, and it's starting to be very, very, very peculiar. Uh, now, what is this? So this would be late in the afternoon of the 3rd of June. He has one, uh, one insight, so it doesn't take long to get to drive now, modern days, it's a couple of hours drive between Oxford and uh, Avery, I think from memory. It's an hour's drive, modern drive, so we could probably say two or three hours drive to Avery. There is a pub at Avery that he could stay in, which we will find out for next session, because I think we'll wrap this session up. So he's got, he's, uh, it's probably the, still pub, the same pub that's still there now, which would be cool, because <laughs> we went in there. Uh, so there's the Avery, Avery pub in Avery in 1920. Uh, it'll take him two hours to drive. So let's say two to three hours 
uh, drive in an, in 1920s, or would he get a cab or something? 1920s, how would he get there? I need to look up, how would he get there? Would he own a car? Probably not. Or would he have to take a cab? So he's gonna package up that painting, so he's packaged it up, and he's taking it at the night, so taking it, so we'll do, we'll start next session late at night on the 3rd of June, when Evelyn gets into the place outside Avery that we'll also look up uh, and will either be staying at the pub or uh, he will go and meet the people. Probably he'll stay at the pub in Avery because you'll know that and then he will go to wherever it is the next day or get contacted the next day. Yeah, all right, that feels all right. That feels okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much for sticking with me all the way through for this. Uh, we're, we're, this is it started like the painting is now going off to Avery, so we'll get to explore that. We'll see what happens to uh, who this group of people is, whether Rachel's there, whether Rachel really is there or not there, and what happens to Evelyn uh, in our next session of Call of Cthulhu Freeform at the Ashmolean. Thank you very much for my subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, please consider subscribing, which I've probably only just said to you. Uh, thank you very much to the members of uh, uh, who have joined. Uh, the membership uh, thank you much to all of you for all of your watch time and everything and i think i'll leave it at that i've got lots of things going through my head because of this now anyway have a good week speak to you next time bye bye